Hello guys, we're going to take a look at how you can use Apollo Code Gen, the types that they create, and use it in a React application to add TypeScript types or flow types. Now right here I have the types that are outputted. So in the last video I was running the uh, Apollo Code Gen code on the server, but in practice I find I more uh, run this on the front end in the same location as my React application. So here is my React application right here, and you'll notice I have a source, and this is a TypeScript React application, and it is using Create React App and using the TypeScript version. Now to generate those types, I added a line in my uh, package.json that I like to use called Gen Types, and what it does is it'll introspect the server. So this is the same thing that we saw yesterday. And then after that, it calls Apollo code gen. Now the only difference is instead of using .graphql files, I am using uh, .ts files. So I actually wrote the uh, GraphQL queries using TypeScript and then using GQL. I'll show you guys that in a second. So here I'm searching source for all the files that use uh, basically all the queries or mutations. And then in my output, I output a source out operation result types. So that's this thing over here. Um, but running those back to back, so now I can just do npm run gen types. And what it'll do is it'll generate a schema. So this is the same thing we saw yesterday. And then these operation result types. So now that I have both of these on the front end, we can start doing some stuff. So let's take a look. I have a two folders, queries and mutations. So I have Apollo Boost downloaded, and uh, from that I have GQL, and here are just the queries. And if you've used GraphQL and React before, this looks uh, normal and familiar, right? So here I defined a query, um, just called it a user query. Here's a delete mutation, and here's a create user mutation. Now you'll notice I have variables in here because I want to be able to plug those in when I actually call the query or the mutation. And uh, in the operation type, you'll notice there's variables, right, for each one. So let's take a look how you might use these. So first, I want to show you basically all the different ways to kind of use this and to type it. So the first is just a basic query. So here is me using the user query right here. So ignoring the types at first, you'll see I'm using the GraphQL higher order component right now and I have user and here I'm passing in uh, the options I'm specifying the variable that's used for this query so if we take a look at this query we need an ID so I'm getting this ID from the props passing it in and I'm injecting this into the user component and here I'm just rendering it uh, I'm console logging the props but you can remove this important bit here is you'll notice how I'm destructuring it like this because data can actually be null so we have to check this because we're using TypeScript and it enforces this um, then you'll notice I am destructuring data and I need to make sure that uh, if it's loading or if user is undefined we're gonna return null because we can get an undefined user back from this now right here I'm just renaming this to uh, u um, that's because I call it user up here so there's a naming conflict and then here's me just displaying it. So here's how I add actually added types for this. So first off I created an interface up here called props. These are the props that I would expect someone to pass to my component. So if I were to come over here to app.tsx you'll notice I am calling user1 and I pass in color and ID. So in my props right here I have a color and ID string and number and then my React component, the first parameter to this is going to be the props. So the props I'm going to create is child props. And this is something that comes from React Apollo. And this helps you basically add the types. So you give it the props that you expect. And then you pass in any kind of query or mutation. So in this case, we're doing a query. Um, and then also the variables for that query. And now you'll see why I like to name it like this with just an uppercase user. And again, I named all of these mutations and this. So my user over here, I called it capital user. So now I'm doing the user query, right? So now here I just say user query, user query variables. It's very easy for me to reference these. But I specify them here and I specify them here. 
Now, before I, I should go on, I should tell you guys, I am using the latest version of React Apollo. Um, let's look at my package.json real quick. So this might change, but I'm using RC.3. I believe this is the latest version, but take a look if things seem a little bit different. Um, they might change it, but this will give you a general idea of how it works. So that's how you specify it. And uh, the other thing to note is I'm not positive this is the best way to do it, but this is the way I found that it works. TypeScript doesn't complain, and I get all the type information that I would expect. Like, take a look at user. I can now hover over this U, and I see I should expect an ID and a first name on it. So I'm getting the type information, which I want. Um, and I didn't create any of these types, right? These were auto-generated for me, so that's really nice. So that's what CodeGen offers. So I'm going to show you a couple different ways, different queries you might do, and how to type it. So here is the same thing, but using a uh, function, or uh, just a function, right? So here I specify the child props right here, and you'll notice pretty much everything else is the same. I copied the same component, but I turned it into uh, a non-component and just a function. So instead of extending something, uh, we have our function and we have our props here, and we say what is the type of these props? They are child props. And then we pass in user query and the stuff down here. Now for this, you noticed uh, this that won't actually load because I didn't pass in options, but you'll want to do that um, as well. Okay, so let's look at make user. This is how you would do a mutation. So here is the, I'm using the create user mutation. So you'll notice it's almost the exact same thing. So here are the props that I would expect. Here I pass in child props, and then I just pass in a mutation and mutation variables instead of queries. So then at the bottom here, I do the same thing. Okay, so what's nice about that now is the variables. So here's me calling this mutate function. And again, mutate can actually be null, so I have to check for this. So I'm just returning if it is null. But now because we have TypeScript um, in with this and it's hooked in, if I were to say the first name was the letter five, or not, I mean not the letter, the number five, it's actually gonna catch it for us because it knows it should not be a number, it should be a string. So it knows which variables to pass to the mutate function now because we added these type annotations. Okay, so what if I wanted to add a mutation and a query. So let's take a look at this. So this is where things can get a little complicated. So I split it up into two things. And this specifically this one, I'm not sure if this is the correct way to do it, but it seems to work okay for me. So starting at the bottom, so this is me composing both of these together. So here is my uh, mutation and here is my query. So I have the create user mutation and the user query and I passed in the variable. So here are the types for the mutation, here are the types for the query. So then the special thing that I did, you'll see the interface for the props. These are the props that I would expect for my component again. But notice I did these a little bit different now. So first I created a type called query props which I said child props, and then I pass in the query and the query variables, and then the props I would expect. And then the query props, I pass in to another child props for the mutation. So basically I take what I did before and plugged it in as the props to the mutation. So now I have type definitions for both the query for this and the mutation on this component. So we can take a look at, uh, for example, you, and see that it's undefined for the ID first name. And we can look at mutation. Does it show what variables? Yep, here are the variables that it's expecting you to pass in. Okay, the, the one last thing I wanted to show you guys was um, how to do two mutations. And if we come down here, so for example, here's how you would do two mutations. Um, they would conflict with the name mutate, so you would name them make user or remove user. Here's me just naming two different ones. And again, so the mutation, the you know, the type that goes with each one, you supply it. So here's the delete mutation, so I'm giving it the delete mutation and the delete mutation variables, that type. And again, I always pass the 
props that I would expect for to be passed to this uh, mutation. But now I add two different things to the props, a make user and a remove user. And here I just pass in a mutation function. And this again is coming from React Apollo. And this will go ahead and add it. And we can see um, it ex now has the types for this variable. So it knows make user expects these variables and remove user expects these variables. So it goes ahead and types each one. So these were just com some of the common things that came up when I was using uh, Apollo Cogen and trying to type my definitions. I hope this was helpful and you can kind of see the different ways. I'm going to be putting this code on GitHub so you can kind of use this as a reference whenever you're coding and if you're using TypeScript and you need to take a look at uh, how to get TypeScript to be happy with your types. Also, I'm sure the flow version is very similar to this, um, but you'd go along the same lines, right? So you would go ahead and create your type definitions and you would import them in. So, right, I'm getting all of these type definitions from operation result types. That's this thing that we auto-generated. And then you would use the flow types. Now, any time that I want to update the types, let's say I update my schema or I update my queries, I just come over here and do npm run gen types and it'll go ahead and run this command and update both of these for me automatically. So that's how I've been using Apollo Cogent. I hope that was helpful for you guys. That's it for this video.